you know, the one thing about magic that is wonderful is the fact that there are no old magicians. There is absolutely no reason for a magician to ever become an adult. Uh, magicians refuse to grow old because they're all children at heart. It's a very magical place. The castle was actually, my dad was very, very involved in magic and uh, he passed away, unfortunately, before he was able to do things that he would have liked to have done. And one of those things is he always talked about having a club for magicians. I was writing Truth or Consequences and we, my office was in a tall building at Highland in Hollywood where that big shopping place is now. But at that time it was about 11 story building. My office was up on the ninth floor of that building overlooking this grand old house. One day I met the owner of the property, uh, Tom Glover, and I talked to him and I said, I've got this crazy idea for a magician's club and your house would be just perfect for it. And one day I said, why don't you give me the key to the house and I'll see what I can do with it. And he did. My late brother, Bill, and I, uh, we had no intentions whatsoever of being successful. Both, both Bill and I had other careers going, and this was fun. This was a hobby. And basically, it still is. When I was a kid, we were on the road with the Family Magic Act. Now, I guess the easiest way to explain that is I'm from a magical family. I was born in a magic trunk, uh, one of those magic boxes, you know. and. Uh, when I was a kid, I had no other choice but to uh, probably end up in magic because my mother was a magician, my father was a magician, my brother was a magician. We were on the road playing these uh, hotels and my family was kind of on the lecture circuit. People in these resort hotels wanted to see entertainment, but they didn't want to call it entertainment. They, uh, they felt better if it was called a lecture. So my dad invented this uh, full evening show called The Cultural Background of Magic. It was a wonderful show and I was very proud to be part of that magic family. You know, we do the show, but then as a kid, you have nothing particularly, you know, nothing to do. And I, uh, I guess I didn't play much with the other kids. I never got interested in sports or, you know, th throwing footballs or anything. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd be off uh, hanging around theaters and rummaging through the uh, dressing rooms of these old vaudeville houses. When I was growing up as a kid, uh, vaudeville was pretty dead. I mean, silent movies went out and sound movies came in. The, the big stage shows kind of went away because the pictures could talk. Why, why bother having real people? My interest really was more into vaudeville and comedy and show business than it was in magic because I was, I mean, it's uh, why do the kids put beans in their ears? You know, I mean, I've had magic all my life, so it wasn't as exciting to me probably is some kid that took it up at the age of, uh, ripe old age of 10, you know. Uh, after we opened the Magic Castle, I found another old theater down in Santa Monica. That I converted that to the Mayfair Music Hall. And that was a beautiful little Victorian theater where we did vaudeville. And I was, I've always said that I was born the year vaudeville died. And I, uh, basically that was 1931. So I always felt that the, uh, God had looked down at me and said, Milt Larson, you are the one who has to revive vaudeville and bring back all these crazy old acts. So I've, I've done a pretty good job of it, I think. There's no need to retire if you don't get old. My personal philosophy is that no matter what you do in life, you're always only about halfway to where you could be. We're very, very flattered and very honored that uh, my late brother and I will be getting a star on Hollywood Boulevard uh, on that same sidewalk being stomped on by uh, the populace going by and, and uh, uh, right up there with Houdini and David Copperfield and uh, Siegfried and Roy have a star and so we're very, very happy. Even my friend Dick Sherman, the Sherman brothers have a star so we're going to finally have a star. You know, they've been in the uh, Alice in Wonderland where you keep opening the doors and you keep finding things on the other side of the door and I think that's what life's all about. You, there's always another door to open and another uh, thing to find out. It's always a topper to the topper to the topper. I would like to think nobody ever reaches the top. You know, I, I, I really don't think there is such a thing as the top because there's, there's always something on the other side of the hill if you can get to the top of the first hill.